we're at five minutes time. Lovely to have you with us all. Uh, all with us. Dave is going to be presiding at the Eucharist for the first time today. Nate is going to be preaching. So hopefully you'll be able to join in with us uh, wherever you are and uh, meet God in your homes and wherever you find ourselves. God bless.
Good morning and welcome to St. Paul's Old Fort. My name is Dave and I'm a priest, I'm glad to say. It's great to be able to share this service with you this morning with, with my family, my church family. Uh, let's just start with a moment of silence, shall we? So grace, mercy and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ be with you. And Let us pray. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us take another moment to come to the confession, just to call to mind those things that have separated us from God, from one another, from ourselves, confident that we forgive them. confess our sins in penitence and faith, firmly resolve to keep God's commandments and to live in love and peace with all people. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned in thought and word and deed. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbours as ourselves. In your mercy, forgive what we have been. Help us to amend what we are and direct what we shall be, that we may do justly, love and mercy, and walk humbly with you, O God. Amen. May the God of love and power forgive you and free you from your sins, heal and strengthen you by his Spirit, and raise you to new life in Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Say this prayer for today. Lord of creation, whose glory is around and within us, open our eyes to your wonders, that we may serve you with reverence and know your peace at our life's end, through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. First reading is from Philippians 2, verses 1 to 11. If you have any encouragement from being united with Christ, if any comfort from his love, if any fellowship with the Spirit, if any tenderness and compassion, then make my joy complete by being like-minded, having the same love, being in one in spirit and purpose. Do nothing out of selfish ambition or vain conceit, but in humility consider others better than yourselves. Each of you should look not only to your own interests, but also to the interests of others. Your attitude should be the same as that of Jesus Christ, who being in very nature God, did not consider equality with God something to be grasped, but made himself nothing. Taking the very nature of a servant, being made in human likeness, and being found in appearance as a man, he humbled himself and became obedient to death, even death on a cross. Therefore God exalted him to the highest place and gave him the name that is above every name 
that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow, in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord, to the glory of the Father. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Where you can, I'd invite to stand. We're going to hum and dance at home. If you're watching at home, please do stand and join in the singing. We're going to start with Show Your Power, number 104 in the song.
to you. Glory to you. The reading is taken from Matthew 21, verses 23 to 32. Jesus entered the temple courts, and while he was teaching, the chief priests and the elders of the people came to him. By what authority are you doing these things, they asked him, and who gave you the authority? Jesus replied, I will ask you one question. If you answer me, I will tell you by what authority I am doing these things. John's baptism, where did it come from? Was it from heaven or from men? They discussed it amongst themselves and said, If we say from heaven, he will ask, Then why didn't you believe him? But if we say from men, we are afraid of the people, for they, will hold that John, they all hold that John was a prophet. So they answered Jesus, We don't know. Then he said, Neither will I tell you by what authority I am doing these things. What do you think? There was a man who has two sons. He went to the first son and said, go and work today in the vineyard. I will not, he answered. But later he changed his mind and went. Then the father said to the other son, the same, and the same thing, he answered, I will, sir. But he didn't go. Which of the two did what the father wanted? The first they answered. Jesus said to them, I tell you the truth. And tax collectors and the prostitutes are entering the kingdom of God ahead of you. For John came to show you the way of righteousness, and you did not believe him. But the tax collectors and the prostitutes did. And even after you saw this, you did not repent and believe him. This is the gospel of the Lord. Gracious God, on this day, we continue to celebrate all the new things that you are doing among us and will do in the days, the months, and the years to come through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Good morning. Please be seated. <laughs> Good morning, and what a great morning this is. Dave, our brother in Christ, has been priested. The selection committee, the training college, the bishop, and James have given him the authority to be a priest in the Church of England. But where does that authority really come from? Where is its source? You know, in today's Gospel reading, the chief priests and elders question Jesus about his authority. By what authority are you doing these things? And who gave you this authority? And this passage of Matthew comes just after Jesus triumphantly comes into Jerusalem, being hailed as the Messiah, the Son of God. And the people certainly recognized Jesus' authority. And that threatened the chief priests and the elders of the temple. For the, the Roman occupiers of Jerusalem had put them in place to keep things in order. And they did that through the sacrificial systems of the, the, and that, that people had to follow. And the taxes in order to come into the temple. But Jesus railed against that kind of punitive and oppressive system in the temple, which decided who could come close to God and who could not. So Jesus disarms the chief priests and the elders by saying, I'm going to ask you a question. Was the baptism John offered to make way for the Messiah, was that from heaven or was it of human origin? And they could not answer. Because if it was from heaven, they would, ask, they would have to ask themselves why they didn't follow. Why didn't they follow John? And more so, they would have to give over their authority as the purveyors of who is forgiven and who isn't forgiven. They would have to repent and give their authority over to John, and they feared that. But if they said it was human, the crowds would go against them, and they were fearful that if the crowds created disorder, 
the Roman authorities would come in and take their power and authority away from them because they could not keep the people quiet. So they could not answer because, you know, they confused earthly power and authority with God's power and authority. And they wanted to keep that power and authority, and they grasped onto it, so determined to hold on to it that ultimately they demanded the death of Jesus by the Romans. They were so locked into their own understanding of faith, their own authority, they could not contemplate the new thing that God was doing among them. They could not hear that new word of life, of transformation that God intends for all of us and all creation. They could not allow the authority they always knew to be changed. And painfully, we see this on the world stage where leaders of nations are locked into that prison of their own authority, their own power, unable to listen to those who might question them and challenge their authority. So much so that people are imprisoned and poisoned and even killed by those in authority, forgetting that their authority is for the common good and not for their own power. And then Jesus goes on to share a parable of the father who asked his sons to work in his vineyard. And one said, yes, but didn't go. And the other said, no, at first, but then went. And when Jesus asked the temple authorities who did the will of the father, they answered, oh, well, the first. Or the second. <laughs> the second. The one who said no and then went. And those who the temple authority had excluded, those who had been considered unrighteous and unclean, finally did answer yes and went. They are the ones who came to John's baptism of repentance. They are the ones who understood their need for change. And for this time, they were not rejected with a no by the temple authorities. They seemed to understand their need for God their need for repentance, the new thing God wanted to do. But the so-called authorities of the temple who were saying yes in all of their rituals and their own system of faith initially said, oh yes to God, but when called to repentance, they did not go. Because they wanted to hold on to that authority that they had created instead of trusting God's desire to turn them to the new thing that God had for them. Jesus says very pointedly to them that those you have excluded, the tax collectors and the prostitutes, it will be they who go into the kingdom before you because they believed in John's call to turn afresh to God, to prepare for the coming Messiah. And no one turned them away this time. And perhaps they really did believe this was a new way that they could come before God. And Jesus says to them, John came to you in the way of righteousness, and you did not believe him. And even when you saw it, you did not change your minds and believe him. Now any of us, none of us, are defined by the power we hold or don't hold, the authority that we hold or don't hold. We are called and loved by God, and we are defined by keeping open to that new thing God wants. We're defined by the way that we express God's love of neighbor and stranger. And we are defined by the way we share that love. John Hall, who is a theologian who is actually now blind, wrote a book about why Christians stop growing. And one of the ways that we stop growing is clinging and grasping onto our own sense of rightness. He claims that people are often addicted to their need to be right, to refuse to see another way, to refuse to allow God to lead us to a new understanding, instead of clinging to the way we've always understood things. Be it the way we read scripture, or the way we are church, or the outreach, or the prayer, or how we meet, God is constantly calling us to be transformed 
into something better, into a greater part of God's plan for each of us and for the world. And Dave, one of the things I admire most about you is that you have allowed God to change the way that you think about God, about a particular way of understanding God, about being church, about coming to faith in your journey. And instead of turning inwards and grasping on that, fearing you might be wrong, unable to change, you bravely turned outwards to others for help, to voices of people other than the ones that perhaps you always followed. You humbled yourself, Dave. You allowed God to disarm those notions of God that made you anxious and fearful, and you discovered the wideness of God's mercy, that ongoing, never-ending reach of God again and again to touch people's lives. And you listen, Dave, you listen to people whose life experiences are very different from yours, and you value them. It seems to me, Dave, that you shook off that you should love God or else, and you reached out, yes, yes, you can find God's love because God is searching for you and will search for you until the end of time. And it's that God that you have received your authority from, Dave. It's this God who searched for you, who called you and loves you. And Dave, I'm sure there will be and has been a cost to that change. But you have found the joyful freedom of that God. You have found this Jesus as friend and brother and Lord, and all of this is part of the priestly formation and presence that you bring. And as you witness that change in your own life, you will continue to see others transformed, others changed, others freed by the love of God and for the love of God. And you will do that through your actions and your words and by the grace of God. And I tell you, Dave, we're blessed that you are here among us to point out that loving grace of God when we miss it, when we're too fearful to see it, or when we're holding on to things that we need to let go. The beautiful hymn of Christ in Philippians speaks to Christ's authority being equal to God but not grasping that power for himself. Jesus, God in flesh, gave over that authority and that honor in death so that we might have a relationship with God because Jesus trusted God in all things. And it is because of that very power and authority that Jesus exhausted the power of death and evil to define us on the cross. This beautiful hymn in Philippians encourages us all to allow God to change us from that fearful place of, of not feeling good enough or feeling others are not good enough and allow God to transform us and our communities to reveal that wonderful grace of God. One writer says the true test of our authority as Christ's followers is whether we believe in and make possible God with us in the world. And God knows that we need it and the world needs it. It needs people who will experience God's grace and love, who will encourage and support others to discover that grace and love in their lives, in their journeys, and point them to Jesus who leads them in sorrow and celebration in life and death. So Dave, as you celebrate Holy Communion with us today, the mystery and the mercy of God's love, and as you do that in the days to come, we rejoice with you that God wants to be with us, that God invites us on the journey with God, so that we will journey into the fullness of God's love and mercy to set us free from fear and death and to love and serve God not only for us, but for the world. I don't know if we've said this yet, but hallelujah, Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Hallelujah.
Dear Lord, we pray and give thanks for our church here at St Paul's, for everyone who has made it here today, and for those joining us online at home. Lord, in your mercy, yeah. hear our prayer. As the, as the calf opens again, we pray that it's a comforting space for people to use the building and feel your presence as your spirit is on us, with us, and for us. We give thanks to Chris and all the volunteers making it possible. We give thanks that we can safely be together in worship, in Bible studies, in church, and at the Bible in the pub. Lord, in your mercy. Dear Lord. Lord, we pray for Dave and his new, exciting chapter after his ordination. We give thanks that we can share this with him. Please guide him be with him on his journey as he follows your calling for him. Lord, in your mercy. Lord, we pray for the world as we learn to live with the pandemic. Please help us stay safe and look after one another as new rules and guidelines are put into place. May fear and anger not take over us. As London is put on the watch list, Lord, Remind us that your love and hope is still alive in all of us. Please help the government to make the guidelines clear so that everyone can play their part in making our world a safe place. We especially lift up the towns in the northwest of England who are facing tighter restrictions with their restaurants and pubs being closed. We pray for the infectious disease ex experts as they work to find a vaccination for COVID-19 so we can get back to normal life again. We pray for the Black Lives Matter movement. May their views and protests be heard and respected without the need for violence so a positive change can happen for them. Lord, in your mercy. Thank you for the successful return of Rise on Monday evening. This was a safe place for young people to gather and we real friendships with their peers that they haven't seen for months and regain their social confidence. Thank you for all the staff and the youth team who helped make this happen, especially the volunteers giving up their own free time to do your wonderful work, Lord. Thank you for Jessica our youth leader, who's been planning and preparing risk assessments to make sure the group can be open at this time and remain open safely. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our We pray for those known to us who are sick physically, mentally and spiritually. Please comfort them with your love so they can feel your presence and know they are not alone. We pray for Steve and hope he continues to recover well. Please give him and the range strength as we lift them up to you in prayer. As Dulcie's older sister was laid to rest this week, please bring her family together as they grieve, as they grieve and comfort one another. Please, please help them grieve in peace and know you are the biggest source of strength for them to lean on. We pray for Roy, Roman, Rolian, at, this, at the passing of Lillian. Please hold them in your loving arms. Let them feel your gentle spirit with them. Your comfort is like no other. May we all know your love and glory. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Let us be still as we sit in a time of our own private reflection, reflective prayer and praise. Share with you anything that may be heavy on our, on our hearts.
merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour Jesus Christ. Thanks, Debbie. It's great to have Debs on team here. It's great to see her pray this morning. She brings such a lightness and a freshness and a huge support to Jessica. So thanks, Debs. Where you can, please stand. For those at home, I encourage you to, as we share the peace, to hug someone next to you. For those of us here, we're going to wave, we're going to share the peace. When I was with Danny last week, we did it in sign language, which I don't know if I'm getting it right, but peace be with you. You're welcome to do that. Peace be with you. Brothers and sisters, Christ is our peace. He has reconciled us to God in one body by the cross. We meet in his name and share his peace. The peace of the Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us offer one another a sign of peace.
once more, Christ calling out the last new cross for us. A place where we reconcile to God, where we receive the Spirit to empower us to live in that grace. I just wanted to read a few words just to encourage you this morning from, from Romans book. It says, We take Holy Communion, not because we're doing well, but because we're doing badly. Not because we've arrived, but because we are traveling. Not because we are right, but because we are confused and wrong. Not because we are divine, but because we are human. And not because we are full, but because we are humble. So brothers and sisters, the Lord is here. The is Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Father, you made the world and you love your creation. You gave your Son, Jesus Christ, to be our Saviour. His dying and rising have set us free from sin and death. And so we gladly thank you, with saints and angels, praising you and singing. So, Father, we remember all that Jesus did. In him we plead with confidence his sacrifice made once for all upon the cross, bringing before you the bread of life and the cup of salvation. We proclaim his death and resurrection until he comes in glory. Great is the mystery of faith. Christ is Christ is Lord of all life, help us to work together for that day when your kingdom comes and justice and mercy will be seen in all the earth. Look with favour on your people and gather us in your loving arms and bring us with all the saints to feast at your table in heaven. Through Christ, with Christ and in Christ, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honour and glory are yours, O loving Father, forever and ever. Amen. As our Saviour taught us, so we pray. Our Father, who art in
Lord Jesus Christ, which he gave to you, and his blood, which he shed for you. Eat and drink in remembrance that he died for you, and feed on him in your hearts. It's sanctified faith, it's sanctified.
and a little token of our excitement about all that God will do uh, through the years ahead of your ministry, both here at support and whatever lies beyond that. And thank you for being who you are. Thank you for sharing your ministry with us. Uh, we're excited about what lies ahead of you. Let's give Dave another round. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord.